it was not an easy path to go from being a research scientist to founding my own company. I had no business expertise, no network, and no friends that were founders. In addition, everybody told me that I was crazy for leaving my well-paid job. You would think that this would affect me the most and would block me from giving my best, but it, could, it didn't. It wasn't that. What affected me the most was the feeling of not belonging in the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial world. At work, I stopped wearing high heels, dresses, necklaces, even earrings. I thought if I wore them, I wouldn't be taken seriously. In business meetings, I didn't show any sense of warmth or care. I didn't try to build any type of connection. I kept my emotions cold. Unconsciously, I was taking the role of a stereotypic businessman. <laughs> yes, stereotypic businessman to fit in the community, to feel part of it. When looking back, I realized that I was facing two challenges. One was caused by me and the other one by the community. But luckily, I learned to differentiate them by reading a lot of research articles on gender bias in the workplace. This knowledge empowered me and helped me realize how the idea of entrepreneurship being a man's world had been blocking me from being myself, from being authentic. Of course, the thoughts that were caused by the community were also blocking me, but I couldn't do much to change those ones in the short term. However, I could change my mindset, my self-perception, and fight those self-biases, those self-prejudgments. <coughs> The self-perception, according to scientists, is built during the first five years of our life and therefore is highly impacted by the gender stereotypes that we pick up from our parents and teachers. The self-perception can limit the development of our talents, natural talents and our abilities and can impact the choices in our education and profession and ultimately our lives. For example, it can stop women from pursuing leadership positions and it can affect men, can stop men from becoming kindergarten teachers. It can also affect how we perceive the opposite gender. We might feel, we might see incompetent, a female firefighter or a male nurse. And unfortunately, the self-perception can also affect our performance. Take, for example, a chess game. Now you might not think it, but chess is a men's game. Women make less than 5% of registered players in tournament worldwide. But chess should be an equal game, right? A battle of, uh, of minds. It shouldn't matter if we play against a woman or a man. Or well, that's it. Well, it turns out it does. Even if you never see the face of your opponent, your performance is influenced by who you think you are playing against. In a study from 2008, from a research group at the University of Padova in Italy, demonstrated that if in an online chess match, female players are told that they are playing against male players, they perform worse than men. They underperform. <laughs> However, if they are told that they are playing against other women, even though they are playing against men, but they are being lied to, they perform as good as men. They no longer underperform. That's crazy, huh? In another study from 2005, a research group from the University of Illinois, the US, demonstrated that men also experiment the stereotype threat. When men are taught that the task they are doing involves skills where women are better, they underperform. So just the thought of the opposite gender being better 
naturally makes us underperform. So ladies and gentlemen, next time you think your partner is useless at doing something, <laughs> maybe he or she just thinks that you are better. <laughs> Besides the self-bias, there is also the unconscious bias in our community. And as I said before, this is more difficult to control. One important bias, which often goes unnoticed, is the hidden bias in job advertisement. Searching for a job can mean hours and hours swiping one job advertisement after another one, because no job ads are really speaking to us. Have you ever wondered why? What if I tell you that the words used in a job advertisement, not the requirements, but the words used, can affect the perception of the job ad, can make you overlook the job ad and discourage you from applying? A research study from 2011 from a university group in uh, Waterloo University in Canada have shown that job advertisements are written using gender-specific wording. And this wording affects the job appeal differently depending on the gender of, uh, of the reader. In particular, what they found was that male stereotypic jobs, such as the ones for an electrician position, were loaded with more masculine wording. In contrast, Female stereotypic job ads, such as the ones for a human resource position, were loaded with more feminine wording. And the most important finding was that female applicants, they were more appealed by job ads that were written with more female words. And male applicants were more attracted by job ads containing more male words. But it's important to remark that men were not as sensitive to wording than women were. Some examples, some examples that were of those words that were part of the study are the following ones. The green ones are words considered male, male wording, and the yellow ones are words considered female wording. They are words that simply describe people's skills. But what it means is that if you write a job ad using words such as ambitious, highly competent, intelligent, or analytic, you will most likely appeal to male applicants. And in contrast, if you, use, if you advertise for committed, hardworking, caring, or intuitive, you will most likely appeal for female applicants. The job ad could be the same but the words change everything. Do you think that women cannot be ambitious or highly competent? And do you think that men cannot be caring and intuitive? Of course not. But due to gender stereotypes that are deeply rooted in our society and our culture, women and men do not feel represented by those words and they don't feel that they fit in that job ad and feel discouraged from applying. When learning about this research, I wondered, could we not build a software tool that could help us detect those words and replace them by other ones with no gender connotation? And furthermore, detect words that are biased against other minority groups? This would be a brilliant way to remove part of the biases in our community without having to wait 100 more years for a mentality change. <laughs> this would help us speed up the process of getting more women and minorities into positions such as tech, leadership, and other ones where they are underrepresented. And this is why I decided to step forward with my job and use my expertise in technology and my passion to build such a tool. And this brought me to found my company, Develop Diverse. In Develop Diverse, we provide companies and 
high education institutions with a software tool based on artificial intelligence that remove bias from recruitment and communication content. This way, companies can convey better their message to their audience and attract people who are both qualified and share their values and their vision. When uh, our software tool helps users to identify bias words and also convert them into neutral ones. And those bias words are such as the ones I saw you earlier. But these ones are fairly obvious. What about more subtle words? Can they be detected? Imagine, for example, a job title. What if instead of having the title developer, we use the term programmer? What job title will appeal more to female applicants? So the same, right? Developer, programmer? Well, not. Our own research have demonstrated that developer is 3.5 times more male connoted than programmer. So if you want to attract female, you have to use the term programmer. <laughs> Both words seem no more, none of them seem to be more male than the other one, however they are. This is why we use artificial intelligence to figure out the gender connotation of those words that seem to be innocent. This technology has helped us to identify tens of thousands of biased and neutral words, at least that we are continuously expanding. I would also like to share with you the research, results of our pilot study. Those companies that used our software experiment and increase by 20% of female applicants and by 22% of total number of applicants. Why should companies work towards gender diversity in general? Why is it important besides making the world more fair? Well, research studies have shown that companies with the highest diverse, gender diverse boards are more innovative, they are 15% more profitable, they have a better understanding of their customers, and most important, they have a higher employee retention because they develop a more inclusive workplace culture. Don't you think it's time to use technology to speed up gender equality in our community? Or shall we leave the space to stereotypes? You can lead the change. Awareness is not enough. Use technology. Thank you.